Yeah. So okay. I will do three, two, one. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Branding Beardos, and we are here for another segment of Tauke Talks. So staying true to what the Branding Beardos are all about, bringing to you brands and insights from an Asian perspective. Today, we are so honored to have our next guest who comes from a country that is recognized for so many wonderful things like Jollibee <laughs> and a very young and talented workforce. Jovil Omaga describes herself as an educator by heart and an academic professor by profession. She acquired her master's degree in educational research and her doctorate degree in development management. What kind of, we are really getting a lot of high caliber people on our show. Yeah, man. She also founded Bintask. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. Startup is just basically a startup BPO outsourcing company in Zamboanga City in the Philippines in April 2019. So this is truly a startup. At present, she is the company's chief executive officer and Vintask works in both the B2B business to business and B2C business to client workspaces. And Jerville, most importantly, envisions her company to be a global brand. Wow. So from all the way in the Philippines, Let's welcome the Tauke of Vintas Javil Omaga. Welcome to the Branding Beard. Good evening, good day, good morning, everybody. Thank you <laughs> welcome, for having Javil, me here, to the Ken. show. Thank you for having me, Kenneth. Thank you very much. Yep. That's I'm wonderful. Glad to be here with no, you guys. So the, the, the first thing off the bat, right, I want to ask this question because I remember the, you know, actually for, for Javil now, we, con uh, we connected with each other over LinkedIn and we've been liking each other's posts and commenting. <laughs> yeah, but for yeah. me, it's the, the, the interesting part is, how did you get from being an, acad an academic, right? A teacher, a, a lecturer, a professor to running your own business? Yeah. How did that, what made you wake up one day, you know, maybe over some pandesal and hot coffee <laughs> and you arrive at that decision? But what, what was it that triggered it? Yeah, I was thinking the same to us, asking myself the same question as well. I mean... Um, I've been in the academy. I've, I am a professor in one of the universities here in, in Sampuanga City, Western Mindanao State University. You know, I've been, been uh, studying my whole life. After graduation, I started teaching right away at the age of 19. Uh, wow. Very, yeah, very young. And um, I got my master's degree, had two master's degree, was sent to Australia to finish one, and then went ahead to have my um, doctorate degree. And then, you know, after those struggles um, in school, like, you know, trying to like climb up the ranks in, in an academic setup. One day I woke up, I wanted to have a call center. And then I called a lot of people. Most of my friends were working in Manila, who's been in the call, in the, in the BPO industry for, for quite some time and asked them like, hey, do you want to collaborate with me? And what are the things uh, should I be preparing if I wanted to start on, 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 on a business like this? And that's where it started. Well, if, go, if you're going to ask me what really triggers me to start this business, I don't know. Like, I just wanted to start this kind of business perhaps because it's a very very I, specific i know yeah I it's a very the, specific ambition yeah i came from the academe and i can and we have a lot of graduates like on on a, on a yearly basis of mm. course we produce a lot of uh world-class globally competitive graduates and where are they now i mean they aren't they haven't been given the chance to to work in an environment that would showcase their skill set and a lot of them would go to manila would go to cebu where the big players are you know okay. John, they're the, the big call centers are right. and they would try to find okay. yeah makati uh, uh in in the cebu it park and to, to seek for greener paths or to, to find a job in the in the BPO industry. And then I was thinking here in Zamboanga City, since we produce these graduates and they would be away from their family, why not, you know, have our own startup here where we have a um, pool of talents, you know, and we, we have this reach to this pool of talents. And that's where it actually started because I also have a, 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 a small review center. We also offer English language proficiency courses. Mm. And yeah, and these students that we have in our review center, the purpose for them having this um, English proficiency courses is for them to make use of the certificate to go to Manila to have the jobs in the call center. So that's where it actually stemmed. Like, okay, why not? have our own right. 
center here is centering in Zamboanga. But the problem is, I don't know the process. I don't know mm. how to start it. And um, it's a good thing that we have a lot of friends. We have a lot of connections uh, working also in the in, in that industry that I was able to start slowly. And eventually we're one year now. Yay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're, we're continue. We, we continue to be the best we can. There has been a lot of ups and downs, challenges. It's always been a part of the journey. But yeah, we keep our heads above waters. And the most important thing is we innovate. Mm. Uh, we welcome changes and uh, we just reach out to a lot of people, see what's the best practices and continue to, to work from there to, to improve. So, yeah. So let, so let me jump in here and ask you a question about, mm -hmm. you know, you, you come from education mm -hmm. and then right. you're running a business and it's almost two polar opposites. Mm -hmm. uh, were there anything, were there any skills? that you took from education mm -hmm. and being an academic that were like transferable into running a business? Definitely. Um, definitely. This is a very good question, Kenneth. Definitely. Uh, one thing is that, of course, we know how to filter out people. You know, in every organization, be it in business or in the, in the academe, you know, the most important capital is human capital, right? Our people. And that's the most important thing that I am well versed into because we know how to take care of these people and we know how to spot a talent right away, right? And then aside from that, um, organizational management, um, it may be a lot different in the academe and in this industry, but you can actually make use of these best practices into, from the academe into, the, into this industry. So, um, oh. There is bits and pieces. There are bits and pieces that you can bring in, um, such as management, leadership, uh, strategic planning. So research and development, all these are also needed, very much needed um, in this industry, especially that I am very hands-on and you know uh, navigating and uh, like sharing the, this this um, business. So what's important is the leadership that you're bringing into into this um, industry that I have learned so much from the academe. So, yeah, I think oh. uh, the, the best practices are there. It's just a matter on how you're going to make use of this in this context, in the context mm -hmm. of, um, uh, in the context of BPO industry. So, I'm sure that a lot of people are also wondering also because you're a startup, you know, and mm -hmm. it's only a year plus old. And right now, we are in the great pandemic of I know, so right? everyone, yeah. wants, everyone wants to know how are you surviving you know during yeah. these times how what what kind of lessons are you trying to learn because the thing is right and we addressed this before we are mm -hmm. not we are in a point of time where no one has any answers for you mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is a trial and error so what are you doing as a as a business now right what what lessons are you drawing where are you drawing those lessons what are you doing to overcome uh, all these challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, Big, Ma Big Mike and Kenneth, um, you really cannot do anything when the client would like to pause or would, when the client would like to stop for the moment uh, while the pandemic is going on because it, they're, they're also losing a lot of you know, revenue-wise. Mm. So you can't say like, please don't leave us, don't stop. I mean, don't stop this collaboration. Don't, not, don't stop this, uh, this, this project with us. You really can't do anything when the client says, okay, Jervil, I think that for, for, for the meantime, we're going to stop. We're going to have you on pause. So um, we still continue reaching out to many people, to, to uh, different organizations and companies in the United States, those who are still in need of our services. We still continue that. But what about the, the, our workforce who were on float or, or, or uh, I mean, who lost the, mm. the campaigns that we've lost. So mm. what are we going, what, what do we do with them? Um, well, for a lot of, for a lot of um, leaders, leaders as myself, during that time, it has really been difficult, like so challenging. Um, you're thinking of your bills to pay, right? Okay. Uh, you're thinking of the um, salary that you need to, to keep, giving out to your staff so it's it, the, the operational expenses is is there and you need to keep yourself afloat so what what are the what what are the steps that i have taken um foremost it's 
the webinars and the different articles uh, the different leaders in LinkedIn has provided has helped a lot. Like, how are you going to pivot your business in these times of, uh, in this challenging time? So it has helped a lot to reorganize my, my, my little company. So um, while we still do our best to give the best services that we give to our clients and all of our agents are doing work from home. Of course, I think it's, it's, um, it happens with, even with the best big, big players, they all do work from home. Um, the, the constant communication with the staff is, will, is always there. Um, assuring them that everything's going to be okay, that whatever whatever assistance that you need from the management, we're here. Um, and well, business wise, you know, the clients coming in, we more on like it, it, it's like this with John. I wasn't really uh, worried that there will not there are no clients coming in during those times. I, I think it's about three months. So what was important to me was our present client, our present clients during that time. So we made sure that it was still the best practices or the best service that we give out to them. Um, and also during that time, it also gave us the opportunity to reorganize. Mm. It also gave me the opportunity to train our people more. So those times where there weren't many clients coming in or there weren't many projects coming in, I made sure that the workforce will be equipped with more, uh, with more, um, what do you call this, uh, trainings. Sounds so like you not, use your time wisely. It, 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 yeah, that's right, Kenneth. It was more of like, yeah. there's nothing we can do because there, there will, there, there aren't any more, there aren't clients coming in because all of us are affected. Right, most mm -hmm. of the big companies in the USA are affected. So instead of sitting in one corner sulking, so I said, like, okay, we'll make sure that our team will will be trained. This is the time we're in. We make we make use of this time to train our team more, to learn uh, another another skill set that we may be able to offer another vertical by sending our the uh, other staff to any trainings available. So we keep on we 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 kept um, educating ourselves ourselves innovating in such a way that when we when the walls come down you know when this pandemic is over and when the economy starts to to build up again then we're here stronger than ever with with um, with um, skill sets that we develop th during those times that you know these things are happening. Mm -hmm. That's, that is actually what um, my company did. That's actually what we did. So for those times, like... Um, that's, so not, that's a very, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm just jumping in here because mm -hmm. I, I really like what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. But that's a very interesting sort of, sort of like unique mindset because mm -hmm. I met a lot of business owners in this time period that will tell me ah, what to do. What, what are we going to do, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're going to wait. We're going to sit here and wait and we're going to let this pass. Mm -hmm. Let this pass before we do anything about it. So, I, I just, and, and it just irks me because, you know, it's, it, time is money and you're burning money if yeah. you sit there and wait. Yeah, it is, right? yeah. Mm -hmm, and, right. and, they, and here we have Jerville <laughs> figuring out that we need to train and we need to build the workforce so that we can come back stronger. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Where did this mindset come from yeah just to add on to Kenneth's mm -hmm. just to add on Kenneth's question also to, to look at the other part of it as well is it something to do with the Filipino culture that makes yeah I was about to ask you also whether how how receptive your team mm -hmm. uh, were to the training because you know when I personally witness uh, workshops and and corporate trainings in the Philippines is the atmosphere is is very high and I remember sitting in one session where this group of <clears throat> participants actually just finished a night shift and there they were after the night shift going for a two three hour training session mm -hmm. and they were mm -hmm. still hyper energetic right? I know, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right that's so right, is that that's something right. to do with the culture like, yeah well? is that yeah. cultural and then that's like right. it's, it's, it's where the mindset come from that it is culture remember uh big john kenneth when i when i told you just a, a, a 
a few seconds ago that um, um, in an organization, the most important capital is human capital. Mm -hmm. And that is where I would always start. Like we start at this, we start by having good people. We start by, 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 uh, by, by, uh, uh, by, um, making sure that we only have the best because when you have the best people, then, uh, it's going to be an autopilot soon. As to your question, um, Kenneth, like where does this mindset coming from? I guess that again, going back to your first reaction, like, uh, how am I being an academician, the best practice, how am I, you know, fitting in, in the BPO industry? I think that's where it came from. I'm from the academe and um, during the, um, after each and every, like we finish every school year. So there's like two months that we're on holiday, the teachers and the, the, the students are on holiday. So we make use, we make, we make use of that summertime to equip ourselves, to equip the teachers with different, um, with, with more, with the latest trends. And that's where it came from. Like, okay. Instead of just sitting here, waiting for new clients to come, waiting for the economy to open up, waiting for the different states in the United States to open up, we do something that would actually innovate, um, that would actually strengthen our skills so that when everybody's ready for us, we are stronger than ever. So that's when we do coaching sessions, training sessions. I have, uh, I, I was able to tap different, uh, trainers in Manila from, from Cebu to talk to the team and yeah, that's it. So we made use of our time to, you know, strengthen our skills, to gain, to gain, uh, uh quality skill sets so that when the U S economy opens, we're ready and we're much more stronger than ever with, uh, highly qualified people. And it's just going to be another pilot after. So yeah, we take, we, we take the challenges. It's raining, you know, it's like saying, well, it's raining instead of crying the rain, why not dance in the rain? That's so, so smart. Yeah, That's we so take smart. it head on. I, I John, I love. I love this guest. She's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> so, thank you. You know, yeah. you said, you said, um, I, I love the quote, right? You said, we start by having good people. Mm -hmm. What's, what's, you know, how do you get good people? What's oh. your filtration process like? And, what, and how do you define yeah. a good person? Good wow. people. Wow. Um, foremost, I have this, well, of course, we're not discriminating applicants. You know, we might, you know, we might tend to be, I might tend to, you know, give out comments that would come out as discriminating applicants, but not really. Um, what's important for me, I am actually not looking for somebody who has really vast experience, like um, in terms of uh, salesmanship or in terms of um, them being sales representative or really have a vast experience or uh, uh, extensive experience in the BPO industry. Um, I would, I would be very happy to start with people who are, you know, fresh graduates because it's, it's actually me nurturing them and, um, mm. putting in, yeah, mm. you get what I'm saying? Like it's the education again, right? Like, yeah. It's education yeah, again. It's like teaching like, again. Yes. Yeah. It's like a blank slate. It's like a blank slate and what you provide, what you write in that slate will be their uh, mantra for the rest of their lives. So right, right. it's like me again, you know, having a baby, uh, teaching them on this is the culture of the organization. This is the culture of the company. And as that baby grows, it, it's imbued, it, it's stilled in their minds, mm. you know, what you teach them. So, yeah, I think that, I would very much like young bloods. Those who are really passionate and would really like to take the challenges. Of course, we also welcome those people who has uh, experience. That's really a big help as well because, you know, their ideas, the best practices that they've gained, that they have uh, experience from the uh, bigger uh, players in the industry, they would be sharing it with us and eventually it would help us with the process, of course. But then uh, what I'm saying is that the workforce, you know, the, 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 the very, the very uh, 
reason why your company is staying afloat, of course, is your workforce. So I think I think that's that's one thing that I also consider. Um, in uh, but with management, of course, if there are other, if if we can see if we if there's a need for us to have an operations manager who's really very versatile in in the in this in this kind of work, then of course we go ahead and look for these people. But when you say that we needed um, we needed our staff to to um, we wanted to journey with them from the very beginning and um, supply them and teach them the necessary skill set that you know, as they, as they go ahead, like, it's like growing with a company. You mm. grow, I grow, we grow together. It's, mm. it's, it's like that. So there are a lot of fresh graduates, graduates um, we have here in the city, in the peninsula, that those are very promising, gifted people, talented, world-class, very competitive. I know the universities that we have here. So that's that's one thing that you know I'm very proud as well because um we have these people right here right. in uh, yeah right I think it's just a just a platform and an mm. opportunity for them to really shine I mean just hearing you talk I'm feeling chills all over because yeah. that's the way that organizations mm-hmm. should work you know and because I mean from not saying that every every company in Singapore doesn't care about its people I'm not not saying that in any way but there are also a lot of businesses out there, mm-hmm. it's a call out also, who really don't give a shit about how yeah. they treat their staff. And it's always about, and, and this story goes back to when I used to work for this very big uh, oil and gas company. I would <laughs> the name of that company. Can no, it and, laugh? Is it something that you guys have No, no, no. We very, big, <laughs> very big oil and gas company. Yes, offer. very, very big. And I had a boss there who would always very proudly proclaim that I'm so proud of myself because I can I have the ability to squeeze blood from stone. Which meant that she worked us to death. You know, yes. and and every day was constantly she, her her way of encouraging was every day reminding you how easily you could be replaced. Oh my god. So gosh. that created a terrible culture of backstabbing, a culture mm-hmm. of every man for himself, you know, and 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 here you are talking about a culture that it's a nurturing culture. Mm-hmm. It's a culture that focuses on, on the development of the staff. So that everyone so of course you're gonna hope that everyone stays and grows with the company, you know, yeah, to pick up yeah. positions yes. of, of leadership, people who totally understand what the fabric, what the culture of the, mm-hmm. the company is all about. I think that's what you're trying to build, yeah. That's right, that's right. Um it's all it's it's funny, big John and Kenneth, that I always would like the staff to, you know, um to like feel like I, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm the same on a on the same level like them, but it, it there's a feeling of there there's a feeling of, of warmth and happiness that the staff are really close to you. Um yeah. like when we started I started with nine people. Um, we go out, we have dinners, we have barbecue parties, wow. we have karaoke, big John, yeah. you know karaoke. <laughs> The Filipinos staple. sing like almost <laughs> every day, Kenneth. Like, if you're here in the Philippines, we gotta have karaoke, Kenneth. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, we do that a lot of times. And it's very, you know, heartwarming that your mm-hmm. staff would always refer to you as, you know, Jervil is not just our C- CEO, we could we could talk to her. And during the time of pandemic, you know, I really had a fun time um, driving from one house to another, distributing Wow. sacks of rice for them you know and they would in in it's it's a it's very heartwarming to really look at their faces so happy and yeah and yeah. um i mean i like think that. this is this is the new like this is the way people want their companies to to be now the companies that they work with to be now mm-hmm. they want it to be that they can connect with the ceo they can connect with the people uh who, who work with them or mm-hmm. who they work for in a very human way because they are no longer just simply you know units in in a, in a factory that produce goods that mm-hmm. make you money but they are people mm-hmm. and they want to be treated as people and i think like one of the things that you mentioned about your culture that you you can you know, people can talk to you, you know, oh, Jovio isn't just our CEO. It's something that is 
really quite rare in our context, right? Mm. Like most people, like boss is still boss. Yeah. And that's it, right? Mm. But this is like on a, on a deeper level. Mm. And it does encourage, I think, um, that uh, your employees to talk to you a lot mm. more. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that with that kind of communication, that kind of conversation, you are actually helping the innovation in your company? That's right. I would really believe that it, it, it helps in a lot of ways, not just in innovation. Um, you know, Kenneth, um, I've been, um, of course, I've been myself. I've started, I've started with being a, 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 a um, an ordinary staff, you know, and um, I've also, you know, a lot of us, not just me, I mean, everybody can, can relate that we experience bullying in the workplace, you know, things like mm. that. And mm. um, I take this experiences that I had to, uh, I take this experiences as something that I could make use of in the very company that I have now. Mm -hmm. Because when there is so much intimidation and bullying in the workplace, the staff or the worker or any agents at that matter will not enjoy and they would look forward to leaving the organization, right? And yes. it's not, it's really not a healthy environment. I hate it. Like you wake up one day, you drag your feet out of your bed, you drag yourself out of your bed, hop in the shower, drive yourself to, to work, but you're not happy. So it's, mm. it, it sucks to, to, to feel that feeling, you know, to have that kind of feeling working in an environment that you're not happy because this, the, there's just a lot of intimidation in the workplace. So I thought, and I have made a promise, I made a vow that that would never happen in the very company that they have. I wanted to have my, I wanted my staff to have this nurturing feeling, to have this feeling of um, very homey environment that they could, because when that person is motivated, Kenneth, Big John, when the person is motivated, when the person is happy, he can actually be more productive. I mean, how many times, how many percentage more productive right. if the person is happy and they'll look forward to going to work. So for you, how, <laughs> yeah. how, how did you find your voice as a leader? How did you find your DNA? How did you find your, this being as a leader? Because it doesn't come, it's not, it's not natural uh, all the time. People think that it's a natural thing, but a lot of it is developed. But how did you find yourself? As a leader? As and, why, a and why are you this specific type of leader what is the driving force oh okay uh how did i find myself to be this kind of leader well foremost big john i i, I should i should tell you that you know growing up i am probably the kind of person who doesn't want to sit sit in the back seat hmm. like i wanted to be in the front seat always <laughs> I don't know if that's a, I, I don't know if that's, it's, it's a bad thing or a good thing, but yeah, um, I find myself um, being um, vocal with what I want, what I feel, and what I needed to, peep, what I needed to say. Like, yeah, I I would always have my, I wanted that my my thoughts, I wanted that my voice be heard and counted. Yeah, like. You know, growing up, studying in, in the high school or in college, I would always be that little, little uh, facilitator that every group have, every leader that every group would, would uh, have. And, you know, I would carry the opinion of my members, of my mates. So I think that actually stemmed from there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, taking education, being a teacher, the more that um, I would want to advocate for say, for example, for women, for children, uh, for children with special needs. So it sort of like make me um, have that platform to speak. Yeah. And well, for, for some, this is called leadership. For some who looks at somebody leading a pack or leading a group or leading a team, well, that's called, uh, that would um, perhaps uh, describe as leadership. So 
if you ask me where what how my DNA what's the DNA that I possess why am I leader like this perhaps um, it would it would um, go back to the many years that I've been in an educational institution um, having students who needs your help um, voicing out wanting your uh, wanting your opinions and uh, your voice be heard and counted and um, I've seen a lot of organizations are in there's just a lot of intimidation in 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 the office and I don't mm -hmm. want that in the organization in my organization so it's more unlike you know being being in the being in the academe experiencing a lot of um, 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 instances or in you know your leadership would would naturally come out like uh, like speaking for your students fighting for the rights of your students fighting for the rights of the group you know things like that I mm -hmm. guess I, I I don't know I guess I guess that that's that's just it well it it's kind of natural from from what you have uh, made mention but you know I was given the opportunity to to um, to talk to voice out my opinion and I'm also very happy as well because people listens mm. that's the that's the good thing when you have built um a really good reputation when you have built um a strong command in the community a really a really good command in the community because people listens to you so when you do your job well like a lot would say ah oh, she's 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 jervil she's she has been my teacher you know i look up to her she's that's that's where you will find that people actually listens to you right and they would mm. consider your opinion as something that is of uh that is of knowledge that is that that can be really used in the society mm. so i i guess i guess that's it i think that i'm just very lucky and blessed that there are a lot of um um, professionals in the community now who were once my students who were my students before professionals now doctors nurses lawyers and they would they would they would tell you that they've been very happy to be to to have you as their teacher in the past and that they look up to you so I make use of this as something that you know we could make use as a platform to actually reach out to the community mm. because there are a lot of people who believes in you and be, who believes in in the things that you have done uh, for wow. them. So yeah, I think I think that's it. Um, and if you ask that, how did I find out that I'm a leader? Um, I don't know. Perhaps I just couldn't sit in one corner. I want to. Mm. I want to participate. I want to be mm. there. I want. I want to be. I want to be you one of those people who could actually speak for the group. You want to have a. Okay. You want to have a seat at the table. I want to. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, yeah. I think so. And um, uh, it's a good thing also that I wanted to engage in 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 an intellectual uh, intellectual argument with a lot of right. people because you learn from there. You That's learn from there. That's right. So. Our last guest said that when he was young, he was the Switzerland of his school. People who wanted to resolve arguments would go to him. He was also very good at carrying the voices of other people mm -hmm. and fighting for them. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like this is one of the key traits of being like a leader. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I yeah, and I don't know whether it's like like born, you know, or you develop it somehow, but Going on that like trait, right? Did, do you have anyone that influenced you? Do you have anyone that influenced you in in a way that you would say has set your path for leadership? Mm -hmm. Well, there has been a lot of leaders in the community, especially in the academe. You can you have a lot of uh, doctors, like uh, education doctors, mm. uh, whom you can, whom I can say that. You know they've been my mentors because it's it's a con it's it's constant learning, Kenneth and Big John. It's a constant learning. You and uh, the more you get to talk to a lot of experts, the more you get to uh, to talk to a lot of um, leaders. The more you can 
um, assess where you are and where else can you improve? What That's else? There's a lot of you... humility as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess that. Well, if you say that, um, if I have, if I have someone looking, I, I'm, I'm looking up to somebody growing up. Well, my mom is a teacher as well. My mom is a very, very strong person. He raised us. Um, my dad passed away at, an, at a very early stage, and my mom instantly became both the father and mother um, in the household. And it's been really a struggle growing up. And I can see her such a very strong woman. I think that that's where it stemmed up me standing up for myself, making sure that whatever will happen i'm going to finish school whatever will happen i'm going to i'm i'm going to do this so there is a lot of you know a uh, battle de deep inside me that um you know the need to to make my mom happy the need to be successful not because i'm greedy for money but mm -hmm. because you know we can do this that even though we came from a very you know, poor family, but we can do this. Like I, I have the ability to, to do this. So first and foremost, I would say that I look up to my mom as the leader in the household. Right. And then, you know, growing up, there's just a lot of mentors uh, from school, mostly, you know, your teachers. That's what, that, that's the reason why I can say that teachers can really make a difference in the lives of the students that teachers can make or break students like especially especially like uh if the if it's that students are struggling and then um i guess uh it's my constant um uh desire to 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 reach a certain what to reach this certain success it's my constant mm -hmm. desire to reach this certain level that I would always look for people who would serve as mentors. I would always look for people who could help me. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's, well, when, when you say that, if, there, if there's somebody who could, whom I could say that I really look up to and really serve as my inspiration, as my role model, there's, there's a lot of them. There, there's a lot of them. And I acknowledge each and every one of them. They have formed really a, a big role in making me who I am today, being a leader. And um, I also read a lot, Kenneth. Uh, Big John. I am a voracious reader, if, if I may say. Um, I, I, I read uh, things that would help me improve. So, so many um, write-ups that would help me improve. That would include education, uh, that would include uh, journals, scholarly journals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I've read I've read a lot of uh, publications on leadership, organizational administration, but of course they're all in theory. What's mm -hmm. important is that you put them into action into the very organization in, into the very organization that you have. Um, I have been very terrible as well um, in in terms of being a leader. Like there are times when human as we are, we are, you know, we adhere to our own emotions, or and it's not all the time we understand people, especially when we're at the height of our emotions. But um, at the end of the day, I would sit down and um, uh, reflect: uh, is it is it the right thing that I did? Like there are times when you can when you when when you can just you know yell at people at the height of your emotions but then <laughs> right but then That's i make true. sure yeah i make sure that at the end of the day I would sit down in the very chair that i have now and think and reflect and um reach out reach out to to these people whom you think that yeah needed um a really good talk over a cup of coffee so yeah uh -huh. i think you know, I hearing so. hearing you talk about about yourself and your experiences really and i and i saw you know as we were introducing you, that you really want your brand, your company to be a global brand. Mm -hmm. Now I can see where, where it's coming from. Where it's coming from, yeah. yeah. So I, I remember uh, delivering a, a, a talk the other day and I mentioned about companies, if you have the same vision as you did 30 years ago, that's right. You know, we I have agree. a problem. So mm -hmm. for you, right, what, mm -hmm. what are the I things agree. that you are actively trying to put in place to grow that brand because growing a brand is really really not a simple thing it's not easy right right, right. But of course That's like right. i think being a, a, a 
a Filipino company, there's also this thing about, wow, look at where Jollibee is. Who would have mm. thought Jollibee gone global, right? The bee has, has spread the pollen everywhere, right? <laughs> popular everywhere. So there's always that hope. But for, for you, what are you doing uh, to really hit your vision as quickly as possible? Without, of course, uh, divulging any trade secrets. <laughs> but what are you doing right now? Well, as I've said, uh, what what is what's very important uh, for us right now is to constantly um, uh, train our people uh, to have that specific skill set, especially in the different verticals that we that we offer. Uh, make sure that. Um, we constantly innovate and we constantly learn best practices in this field because, you know, you cannot give what you don't have, right? Um, um, uh, very important for us that we always challenge, we keep on challenging ourselves to be more than what we are now. Um, because I always have this vision uh, with John Kenneth that when they hear of Vintasts, when people hear of Vintasts, it would always be, oh, yeah, that, that's a very good company. Um, uh, the agents coming from there are really good. So we uh, might as well, you know, pirate the agents from there because they're really good. <laughs> you know, people who wants, who wants us to work for them because we have this kind of brand. And for us to reach that level, we must always we must constantly innovate and that means to say um you know sending out people in different um summits in, in different um seminars in different um any organization in any in, in any development that we think we need to develop more in, in, in any uh, uh um educational endeavors that we need to develop that we need to develop more um yeah, I, and then um, embrace what's the trend because there's always such thing as the latest trend. You have to keep with the latest trend. Like, what's the latest trend now? We always say it's the new normal. What's the new normal? So embrace what's the new normal. So what's happening currently? You got you 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 gotta you gotta uh, you you gotta stick to it. You gotta follow it because. What's the best practices 10 years ago may not no, may no longer be the best practices now, right? Mm. Yeah, mm. you said mm. so yourself, Big John. So constantly be updated with the latest trends. And for us to be updated with the latest trends, we need to go out there. We need to send people. We need to train people. Um, get resources. I mean, hire resources to constantly innovate and um, uh, keep as abreast with the latest technology, with the latest innovation, with the latest trend. I think that's it. So, you know, it's an evolving company. Ventas might be this for this year, but in the next five years, we are more than that. Yeah. So we keep embracing change. I think that's very important because the moment you won't embrace change, you're going to be, you know, uh, left behind so latest trends is very important keep yourself updated with the latest trends I think that for you to become globally competitive you have to embrace innovation wow. and uh, you were set for that we're set for that you know you've mentioned innovation quite a few times That's and right. I don't I don't want you to expose what's in the pipeline but is there any story of innovation that you can share with us mm -hmm. yeah, from the I, past yeah i think it's um well when i started when i when we started um the, I, I i've made mention that we only i started with nine people and then um um it's more of like you know sitting me as the ceo just uh, making sure that that project or that account is, you know, smoothly sailing. And then from my perspective, I just make sure that my agents are working well, tend to their needs. Um, what are what, what are the different needs in terms of technology in, in the workplace, um, equipment, um, and also the, the, the social and moral responsibility that I need to keep 
um, yeah. for, for, for the agents. So it's more of like that. It's more of like, you know, babysitting the agents, looking after mm. them. What are your needs? Are you okay? How How's your day? Yeah. Make sure they're and, okay. Yeah. And they would say, yeah, yeah we're, we're good. How are, how's the client? Are you, are, are, are you, um, please make sure that you're doing your work well. Your productivity is, is uh, within our, it is within the, the percentage that you've been given and so on and so forth. And then eventually, you know, we started to move from there. Let's find another vertical that we could, we could um, offer to the clients. And that's where research and development came in. My mm. research team came in. Okay. So it's very important that you have, a, you have a research and development team to know the latest trends and to know what's, you know, uh, the, uh, probably the, the other services that you, you could uh, offer possibly offer to your clients so i have a research and development team um the research and development team is uh the one uh in charge for for um updating the company with up uh, this we should embrace this we should follow this we should we should take this we should take this path and so on yeah and then um and then we 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 brought in people we brought in different resource speakers um to actually you know, to ha to 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 have one group after the another. So there's there's a group for social media managers. There's a group for for um for SEO. There's a group. So there it's constant. It's a constant. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a it's a constant kind of training. Like it, it's a it, it's we we constantly yeah look for because we have the talents here. We have IT graduates. We have uh, con we have content writers. We have education mm -hmm. students or English majors who who mm -hmm. we who, uh, who are fresh graduates. So we have the talents. We have the people. It's only a matter of looking for uh, a platform or an avenue for these people to work to 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 be given the opportunity to to start work to to um, and and then um, eventually grow uh, their potential in this profession. So that's where it started. So the most important thing is to have a research team. Cool. Yep. Cool. And, well, uh, we'll yeah, and that. then and then also me, of course, I have uh, uh, an extensive experience in research, only in educational research. Mm. Um, have um, that's that's. I really think you know. I would really like to thank my my um, my. Um, education and me being from the academe because you know that's where it came from mm -hmm. you had to have a research team constantly look for for new things out there innovate yeah and so on i think, that's, I a, think that's a yeah. very very important point because there are a lot of companies out there who don't who don't do the research who don't do that and yeah. are faced every single year wondering what the hell are we going to do next year? No, not even what happened. Yeah. What are we going to do next year? And a lot mm -hmm. of current practices just continue on. And I think Correct. this is really where we start to see the, the find the lines between an okay company and a company that's really going to, to make a big splash. Mm. So, <laughs> okay. So wrapping up, last question. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot. There are a lot of people that uh, are talking the talk but not walking the talk, mm -hmm. and you are one of those people that decided to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. You got it, John. You got I, it? Just checking if it was correct. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I would. I wouldn't be able to sleep if I would not finish. If I if I could not get any answers. Right. From the questions so, that I have in mind. <laughs> so my my question to you is. What is, if you can say well, just one thing, one piece of advice to people who are about to take that leap off the entrepreneurial cliff, what will be your advice for them? Well, take the opportunity because these opportunities don't have longer shelf lives. Um, if you really, I would say, I don't know because it's just me, Kenneth, Big John, I would always trust my gut feeling i don't know if, it, if if that's a good advice you know i i don't know but mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. me because when i want something when i wake up one day and i want this i really want this it's it's it i would i would not stop until i get to a decision i when i get to the point that i would be able to get that i, I would get it like 
I, I want to have a review center. Okay, let's make it happen. What are the things okay. that, that it's needed to open a review center? I would like to have a call center. What's, what are the things that's needed to have a call center? If you really think that you want it so bad, like so bad, you can't sleep. You can't sleep. It occupies your mind a lot of time, the whole day, the whole night. When you're eating, when you're talking to your friends, it's there on your mind. Then go for it. That means to say it's pushing. There's there's a voice at the back of your head that's pushing you to go for it. And opportunities don't come, uh, I mean, don't, don't stay that long. It doesn't have a longer shelf life. <laughs> so go for it. Uh, pick the leap of faith. Um, of course, there would always be failures. Not all of our ventures are a success, right? Not mm -hmm. all of them. Like I've tried a lot of a lot of uh, business ventures as well in the in the past, and it didn't go well. Mm -hmm. Up until you will find your niche. Up until you will find that this is it. This is the business for me. Mm -hmm. This I this is this is really for me. After being a failure for 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 so many ventures, this is it. This is for me. Um, but then you must always keep the momentum going. Even if like, if, if you, even if your company is already stable, mm. don't be too like uh, confident, just sit and watch mm. your people work. No, you must always keep the momentum going. And as I've said, always look for something innovative. Always, because what's, what is um, the trend today? Like, Okay, for today, cold calling is the trend. It will no longer be uh, applicable in the next five or 10 years. So always have a research team that would always keep you updated what's going to work for, for, this, for this time. So yeah, I, 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 I think that's it for, for those entrepreneurs who would want to start a business and yet they are afraid, they are uh, hesitant. Um, the more we become hesitant, the more that it's not going to happen. So start it, make it happen. And if it's going to be a failure, if it's not going to be a success, don't stop, go ahead, find another one up until the time that you're going to really find what's meant for you. Wow. And that's what I, that's what I actually did. Perfect. Thank you for that. Thank you, so much, I, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. A lot of, that was, a lot of a few good too, moments yeah. there. I, I hope that I was able to share something valuable, Big John, right? You know, Kenneth, 100%, when, 100%. When, when Big John actually um, uh, gave out the invitation, I was quite hesitant. It's like, there are a lot of big players on LinkedIn that, you know, we get ideas from, and I'm not really sure if I could give a, a, um, a, a good value to... Well, I, I think it was very, <laughs> your answers were really very insightful. And I think that like, there's a lot to learn from you with regards to like doing the thing and finding out ways to sort of, you know, make sure that you don't waste your time and like all these little things, you know, we may think it, like for you, it is, it is second nature, but for a lot of people out there that that's a really a point of learning, even for me, right? Like sometimes I'll like sit around and waste time. But like when I see you grab time and opportunity like that, it makes me like ask myself like, am yeah. I slacking off too much, you know? And I think it's really, really good and actually quite inspirational. Yeah. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm Definitely. glad. Definitely. I'm so happy. I mean, it was a it was a chance thing to just ask you to be part of the podcast. <laughs> I'm glad you said yes. And I think we we really have a lot of valuable lessons to to share with with everyone, you know, even the, 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 just the small businesses, but people who are looking to make that next step, you know, people who are trying to fight their way out of the pandemic. So many lessons to come out of this particular episode. And for that, I thank you so much again. Thank, thank you very, so much. Very Shabir. much appreciate My pleasure, from, yes. From Singapore. And, and of if you course, enjoyed this podcast, make sure you like, subscribe, and share to our channel. And we'll also leave the link for Jervil's company below. Mm -hmm. You can check them out. And... Hire awesome. them if you need to. <laughs> and, <Yeah. they> need <laughs> <laughs> and we'll yeah. also be waiting for the moment where you become a, a great global company and then we'll be back on for another show. For we're, sure. we <laughs> claim, we're claiming that, Big John. Yes, Kenneth, I'm we're sure. claiming that. And we are, we're, we're going to work hard for it to become um, a success. Um, yeah, we claim that. <laughs> yes.
And we all go Fantastic. ahead together, you know, every moment's a chance to restart another, and every moment's yeah. a chance to go out and grab what you need to. Always, you know, always, always, yeah. yeah. Whenever, whenever, we, whenever we stumble, we could always stand up. That's one of my mantras as well, uh, Big John, Kenneth, that, yeah, we, we stumble, we fall, but we also have the ability to stand up. So no matter the challenges, keep going, keep fighting, you know, line heart, line heart. Line heart. And with Amazing. a great big roar, thank you once again for everyone for joining us for this.